Okay, well welcome to the webinar today on proximity transducer system verification. My name is John Kingham and I'm the host for today's webinar. Steve Cook will be our presenter today. Steve has been with Bentley for more than 30 years, serving in product development engineering as well as our field service group. Currently, Steve is the operations manager for the Western region. We are recording today's session and in order to make these videos worthwhile to you and your colleagues, we ask that you make sure that you are on mute and refrain from broadcasting your video. We will be using the Slido app for questions. You'll see the URL right here. Uh, and I always recommend voting for your own question. It will give it extra priority and others can vote on it as well. As we are recording, we will wait until the end after we stop the recording to pose and answer the questions in the queue. And with that, I thank you for attending, and I'd like to turn this over to Steve. Thank you, John. Well, hello, hello everybody. Um, during this presentation, we will be talking about the proximity transducer system verification. All right. Next slide. So for today's presentation, We'll describe a proximity transducer system, then we'll describe a verification, and we'll talk about why it's important. And we'll also discuss the benefits of the verification and who should perform a verification and how often. And finally, we will show some conditions that affect the verification curve. Next slide. For turbo machinery with fluid film bearings, the rotor shaft position with, within the bearing clearance is typically measured using the 80 current proximity show, uh, system shown here. A typical 80 current proximity transducer system includes three individual components shown here. The probe with its integral cable, the, the separate extension cable, and the proximeter sensor. This photo shows an eight millimeter probe using a one meter integral cable and a four meter extension cable and a five meter proximeter sensor. The proximeter is the part that contains the, the electronics and is usually mounted in a junction box. It has a die cast aluminum case with a blue coating that resists chemicals. A 75 ohm coaxial connector is chassis mounted through the casing for connection to the extension cable. A terminal strip is also mounted for supplying voltage to and taking signals from the proximeter. The mounting base provides electrical isolation, eliminating the need for separate isolator plates. The mounting adapters are available in DIN rail mounting or for panel mounting using the footprint of the older 3300 and 7200 proximeters. The circuit board mounted electronics are fully encapsulated in the casing. The probes transmit a small radio frequency EM field that interacts with the metal surface being monitored. As the observed target moves closer to the probe tip, more of the field is observed by the, the metal and the signal amplitude becomes smaller. Most of Bentley Nevada proximity probes have a tip assembly that is molded from a durable polymer material. As we discussed in another webinar, probes are avail available in a variety of diameters corresponding to the required linear range. The tip assembly is securely mounted in a stainless steel case, which is threaded or smooth on the outside. The probe coil in the tip is terminated to a center conductor in an internal screen of the uh, 75 ohm triaxial cable that exits the probe case. The extension cable connects with the probe cable and enables the probe to be located a significant distance from the proximeter sensor. The system provides an output voltage that is directly proportional to the distance between the probe tip and the observed conductive surface and can measure both static position in dynamic vibration values. The system's primary applications are vibration and position measurements on fluid film bearing machines, as well as key phaser reference and speed measurements. In a proximity transducer system, 
the probe does not come into contact, physical contact with its target. Still, such a system can typically measure the displacement of the observed surface with an accuracy and precision equivalent to a machinist micrometer or dial indicator. The proximity probe is part of a tuned resonant circuit that oscillates around one megahertz in the medium frequency broadcast band. The signal produces a low energy electromagnetic field around the coil in the probe tip. This field interacts with the conductive target surface. Tiny eddy currents are induced in the target and they cause some of the energy in the field to be dissipated as a minuscule amount of heat. The change in signal amplitude is converted to a voltage signal that is proportional to the physical displacement between the probe tip and the observed target. Next slide. Transducer verification. When properly installed, the verified 3300XL transducer system, which includes the probe, the cable, and the proximeter, does not need calibration. However, we do recommend the following practices to ensure continued satisfactory operation of your 3300XL system. System components com compatibility. The proximeter, the probe, and the extension cable should be a match system. The system has to have a total electrical length of either five or nine meters, depending on the selected proximeter. Verification of the transducer operation. The probe response is verified by measuring and creating a verification curve. This curve lets you verify the following characteristics of the transducer. The linear range of the system, such as 80 mils, and the uh, scale factor of the system, such as 200 millivolts per mil. Problems that can, that can cause proximity probes to be out of tolerance include improper probe cable length, inadequate power supply voltage, crosstalk and side view conditions, inadequate target size, inappropriate target material, dam damaged components, or loose or dirty connection. The proximeter is designed to give known output voltage changes equal to known gap changes. This is called the scale factor. For the eight millimeter proximity transducer system, the standard scale factor is set at 200 millivolts per mil. Scale factor information can be found on the nameplate attached to a proximeter. The two test components shown here can be used to thoroughly test the response of the transducer system. The digital voltmeter or DVM is used to measure the DC component of the transducer output called the gap and the AC component called the vibration. The Bentley Nevada's TK3 contains a cambered plate that can be rotated under the probe tip to produce a zero to 10 mil vibration. Because the rate of rotation of the plate can be varied, different frequency inputs can be generated. Finally, the rotating plate has a notch in one side, so it can be used to generate a key phaser signal in a transducer that's mounted there. The TK3 also has a spindle micrometer mounted at the top of the, the unit. This micrometer lets you make precise adjustments in the distance between the target of the micrometer and the tip of the probe. You create a verification curve by setting the micrometer to precise gap intervals and then by recording the corresponding DC voltage as displayed on the DVM. The first step for verifying a proximeter transducer system is to measure the resistance of the extension cable and the probe. This verifies proper continuity of the probe and cable. Then we proceed to create a graph and document the output voltage of the system from 10 mils to 90 mils. With these numbers, we can calculate the average scale factor and incremental scale factor which are the two main factors to evaluate your proximity transducer operation. The average scale factor is the change in voltage divided by the change in displacement for the linear range. Incremental scale factor indicates the incremental variances 
within the linear range of the proximeter. When a probe response is evaluated, it should show little deviation from the ideal linear response curve. The API 670 conventions have specifications for both the overall scale factors and the incremental variances. The percent variance from the scale factor of a 200 millivolt per mil uh, 8 millimeter proximity, proximity transducer is plus or minus 6.5% for a standard 9 meter system and plus or minus 5% for a standard 5 meter system when measured in increments over the 80 mil linear range. It's also good practice to perform an inspection of the physical components. Some of the inspection items include the proper gap, the use of connector protectors, the use of the safety lock wire, the state of the click lock connectors, and the field wiring termination. Next slide. So why is verification important? The proximity transducer system is the basic starting building block, the ground floor, the foundation for the rest of the vibration system. From the transducer system, the rest of the vibration system can include the monitoring system, the protection system, the control system, the diagnostic system, and the historian. When any part of the transducer system is compromised, then none of the higher level systems will be able to provide their full capability or purpose. Many times during a machine high vibration event or following a machine trip, operators or management will question whether the transducers are reading correctly. Can we trust or believe the output of these sensors? By providing good documentation to support correct installation procedures and transducer verification curves, maintenance technicians can ensure the readings are within spec and the proper gaps have been set. Failure to do this will result in questioning of the transducer operation and a lack of faith in the transducer reading. Next slide. Other benefits. Since proper transducer testing procedures call for the technician to preassemble and label the probe, the proximeter, and the cable prior to new installations, testing even with an existing system requires to have all three components available during the test. Performing verification curves will discover systems that are out of spec. Further troubleshooting could reveal things such as a mismatched system, such as the length of the probe and the extension cable do not match the indicated length of the proximeter, or a failed or damaged component. As mentioned in the, in the previous slide, Performing a transducer verification also provides additional benefits which can become important when the machine when a machine upside occurs. These include documentation of significant parameters of the transducer system, such as verification of your scale factor, verification of your linear range, verification of your OK limits, verification of your channel power supply, and provides a continuity checker and the end check. Next slide. So what are some of the other benefits of verification? Part of the procedure for transducer verification is to properly document the system. Bentley Nevada service personnel create a spreadsheet to document the part numbers and serial numbers for not only the probe, extension cable, and proximeter, but also for the Bentley monitoring system connected to the transducer system. This spreadsheet describes the exact system that is installed and tested. The benefits of the spreadsheet include creating a spare parts list for warehouse stocks, review of warranty issues by Bentley Nevada related, um, warranty issues by Bentley Nevada related to specific part numbers and serial numbers, and an indication of the age of the system for possible upgrade consideration. Next slide. Bentley Nevada always recommends 
our customers to have a certain amount of critical parts on hand for immediate usage. Many customers have been delayed in operation and production when a damaged or out of spec part needs to be ordered in a rush to get the machine back online. Having parts on hand reduces the chance of costly rush orders, of costly rush service work, and costly loss of production. The spare parts list generated from the Bentley spreadsheet during the transducer verification can help mitigate these costly occurrences. Next slide. Bentley Nevada issues a number of publications during the life cycle of their products. These notifications include field notifications, technical information letters, and product update notifications. These notifications can be general information on the product, but may also be very specific and related to a certain serial number range as the part number. Spreadsheets providing these part numbers and serial numbers can be very useful when these types of notifications are released. Next slide. Serial numbers also can be related to the date of manufacture of the product. By inspecting the serial numbers recorded during the transducer verification, we can determine the age of the system. This can lead to proper planning and budgeting for future upgrades to the system. Next slide. Visual inspection of the transducer system can reveal obviously damaged components at times. On the other hand, there are many types of compo component damage that cannot be revealed during the visual only inspection. Some damage can only be discovered by electrical verification of the system. In addition, some damage may only be superficial and not result in a loss of performance. The electrical verification will indicate that this is the case. Next slide. So who should perform a verification? Transducer verifications are not difficult and can be performed by any competent technician as long as he has the proper training, knowledge, equipment, and he takes the time to properly document and analyze the data. Should a bad component be discovered, he should only have the ability he should, sorry, he should also have the ability to request a quote for replacement parts and expedite the order if needed. The technician should have the knowledge of the transducer components, data sheets, how to set up the test equipment, and have access to calibrated equipment, understand the troubleshooting techniques when a curve is out of spec, and to perform proper documentation procedures as described in this presentation. Bentley Nevada Services can provide field engineers with all of these characteristics shown here. Next slide. So how often should verifications be performed? At a minimum, verifications should be performed during major maintenance outages or whenever the probes are removed. Transducer verifications cannot be performed too often but they can be performed too seldom. The purpose of the verification is to establish credibility of the system. Ask yourself, does anybody question the vibration levels reported by these transducers? If the answer is yes, then a transducer verification should be performed at the next opportunity. Next question, next slide. Verification graph. Reviewing the graph on this slide, you can see the physical distance for the probe graph on, graph on the x-axis and the output voltage of the prox on the y-axis. The scale factor is the response of the transducer to the target in mils compared to the voltage resulting from the measurement. The slope of the curve is the scale, uh, the scale factor. The overall average scale factor is an important tool for evaluating the performance of the transducer systems. In addition, the incremental variances are important as well. When response is evaluated, it should show little deviation from the ideal linear response curve shown here. The API 670 conventions have specifications 
for both the overall scale factors and the incremental variances. Next slide. Component mismatches. If the performance graph does not fall within the specified limits, for example, the linear range is less than 80 mils, or the scale factor is outside of the plus or minus 13 mil, millivolt per mil tolerance, the first possible reason may be that one of the system components is mismatched. The probe extension cable of the proximeter is mismatched in the electrical length, making the overall length too long or too short. The graph above shows effects of having a mismatched system. When the graph shows a curve that is too long, a five meter proximeter is used with a nine meter cable. Where the graph shows a curve that is too short, a nine meter proximeter is used with a five meter cable. Next slide. Power supply voltage. Transducer performance may also be out of tolerance if the provided 24 volt power source is out of tolerance. Voltages between 17.5 to 26 volts may be used by the transducer system. However, a loss in the higher portion of the linear range of the system may occur as shown here. The graph here shows the effects of supplying a proximeter with a lower voltage of 16 volts. Although the scale factor is within the limit, the linear range has been severely reduced. Note that there's approximately a four volt DC offset from the power supplied to the maximum potential output of the transducer system. This means that the maximum output signal will be about four volts less than the power supply voltage. Next slide. Target material. The final transducer calibration issue is related to the surface material being observed by the transducer system. If the proximeter nameplate does not give target material information, the target material must be 4140 steel. The graph here gives examples of different materials when observed by the proximeter calibrated to a 4140 steel target. The proximeter can be recalibrated for different target materials. This process must be implemented at the Bentley Nevada manufacturing facility. Note that if the shaft is plated with chrome, the plating must be thick enough so that the eddy currents from the probe do not penetrate to the underlying material of the shaft. Uh, next slide. So in closing, uh, I'd like to suggest that if your site needs assistance, whether just asking questions about how to do things, you know, what you're seeing in the, your vibration system, or how to even reset a device, feel free to contact Bentley Tech Support or your local Bentley Nevada service contact. In addition to just answering questions, our service group can provide, uh, provide you with hardware quotes as well as service quotes whenever, you know, whatever things that you might need. So, so anyways, I think we're done here. Uh, we can take some questions. Great. Well, thank you.